Welcome, everybody. We are back for our next episode of Present Arms, Working on Projects. Let me get the mouse out of the way. How is everybody tonight? Hey, Scoback, welcome. Good to see you. So I thought we'd work on a couple different projects. We're trying a new setup. You can see we have a wider camera over here. And then, obviously, the close cam here for you guys to see what I'm working on. Um, so as you can see right here, I have a Spectre miniature. This is one of the Mena Forces. Um, I already started working on some clothing. So I'll show you the paints I'm using tonight. So the first one is uh, for the shirt. I'm using the War Paint, uh, the Army Painter War Paints Pure Red. And then for his jeans, I'm using uh, watered down Griffin Blue. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then for the first layer of skin tone, I'm using Oak Brown. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Temporary base. Yes, it is a temporary base. Uh, just one I hot glued the guy to. Eventually I'm going to continue with my... Uh, quest for clear bases, which I have a bag full of them around here. Um, so when I get ready to do the scenario on the game table, I think it'll blend in well versus... I've seen some amazing bases, and like I said in previous episodes, I love doing bases. I think that's kind of like my niche. Um, but for gameplay, I don't want to distract or make it feel like it's out of place. You know, if you're in a urban desert cityscape, and you have jungle-ish foliage on your bases. So I said, why not? So I want to continue working on him. And then I thought maybe, just maybe, if we might try and finish this up as well. And, and or I have, if you were a backer of... Dish Dash Publishing's new Ultra Combat Modern Kickstarter and the Normandy one. Um, this is one of the new miniatures. So they were kind enough to uh, give me some advanced copies at um, Adepticon. So it's a really nice looking mini. Very solid, beefy. Um, this is the Russian Federation troop. And I have a American troop right here. Let's see if I can get the light a little better for you. But really nice minis. Uh, detail's really nice, and it looks really good. So we'll see what we work on. I'm going to try and finish up most of this uh, Mena guy here. Let me get him so you can see him. So nice thing about this is you can kind of get away from military uniforms and painting um, because, you know, they're civilians. So in this case, he's wearing some faded-out jeans and a red tank top, if you will, and he's got a baseball hat on um, for his shoes. I'm not decided what color I'm going to paint him yet, but we'll work on it. Hey, Kansas, where in Kansas are you? I used to live in Kansas. I lived at Fort Riley. So this is what we're working on, um, so I can paint up them. I've got... See if you can see them on the cam here. I got a whole bunch of guys to paint up. So, and I plus I have more somewhere. So, I am getting ready to get on that game table that we got from Adepticon. Oh, down by Hutchinson. I know where that's at. Um, and paint this guy up and get the other guys painted up. That's the nice thing about doing this show. And I apologize for the last few weeks uh, that we've kind of missed out on doing them. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of traveling. We just got back from Colorado and then Easter holiday and all that. So um, we appreciate you guys sticking in there. And I hope everybody's doing well tonight and you're getting some hobby time in as well. So let's get cooking on this guy. And because I'm getting old, I need to put on my magnifiers. Uh, i got to take my headset off for a second because I can't fit them over it. Hold on.
All right. Better. Take off my glasses, though. With those magnifiers, it really does a number on me. Okay. So let me make sure I'm still in shot here, which it looks like I am. Uh, doing the single person. Dawn is unfortunately having to do some real work tonight. Um, so I'm running everything. I asked her if she wanted to do chat because she seemed to enjoy it very much so the other day. So I'm going to go ahead. And if I don't answer you right away, I apologize. Um, but I will get to it. Okay. So has anybody got a chance uh, to do some hobbying themselves? What have you guys been up to? Have you made it to any game shows or conventions or tournaments? And what have you been playing? What is your project right now? All right, so we're going to do a little bit more to his jeans. I've already put them in the paint shaker before, but I'm going to get them going here. Just a little dab. Put that away. Oh, I don't know if you all saw... And excuse this for a second. I redid the paint table, uh, and I found um, acrylic nail polish stands on Amazon for like fifteen dollars a rack. Um, so let me see. I'm going to use the wide cam here so you can see. And it's again, and here you go. That is all the paints. So I got one, two, three, four, five of these paint racks full of all our paints. I've got Scale 75, we've got Vallejo, we've got Game Airs, uh, mostly Vallejo. I have some Turbo Dork, which I will do something. Turbo Dork are a translucent cha color changing paint. And then those silly uh, Team Yankee bullet bottles that I had to get when Team Yankee came out for the boot camp. Um, I got Citadel paints, P3 paints, I got airbrushing paints, uh, cheapo hobby paints for basing, uh, for terrain, and then I got the complete Army Painter uh, collection there as well. And then airbrush, paint shaker, and miscellaneous stuff. So let me get this camera back up, get it mounted again. Get you going. Perfect. Okay, and I messed this one up here a little bit. That's all right. Okay. Well, let me zoom out. I zoomed in a little bit, it looks like. Zoom out, zoom out. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So the challenging thing with this is... Um, doing brown skin tones, you know, not non-Caucasian, if you will. Um, Novus Templar asks, what brand is the paint shaker? This is the Robart Hobby Paint Shaker on Amazon. It's like 40 bucks or something like that. It works pretty good. I, I use the Steel BBs in there to help. If your paints have been sitting for a while, I still shake them by hand and then put them in there to finish them off just to make sure the paint still because it, it just vibrates. You know, it's like the paint shaker at a um, hardware store or a Home Depot or something. It just, you know, moves the can on uh, the horizontal plane and just shakes it back and forth. It doesn't really go, you know, on a Z axis or a X axis, whatever you want to call it. So, um, so you still got to get that paint that's in the bottom mixed up a little bit. So, all right, let's see here. Rasmus, holy cow, the man himself, the Viking has entered the building. Yeah, get some painting done. Do something, Rasmus. Quit playing Drop Fleet all the time. No, I'm just kidding. I'm glad to see that some people are still playing that. Um, I have my Kickstarter for Drop Fleet, and it's still mostly on Spruce. Uh, we just haven't played it, and I really was excited when we talked to Dave when it used to be Hawk War Games, uh, you know, before the whole merger and buy over from TT Combat. Uh, love Dave. Dave's a great guy. Um, you know, I, I'm again, I'm one of those that loves the smaller scale, and I, so that's why I liked um, not Drop Fleet, but uh, Drop Zone Commander. 
the drop zone is that what it's called um the combat game the it's 10 mil um so yeah i really enjoyed it so jigsaw and a clamp make a nice quick cheap paint no kidding Signed up for two days, drop days at Origins. Oh, you're going to Origins. Uh, we're thinking about c doing a little bit of coverage at Origins. Um, but I don't know if we will. Uh, we might be at Historicon. Um, we're, I got to look at that this weekend. Um, Warren was asking us to do that with Justin and Jerry uh, because I think Jared's going to be running his... Um, Rourke's Drift Game, which is amazing. If you guys get a chance to go to Historicon, I would definitely get in on that game. Uh, it was what, one of the most fun afternoons slash evenings we had. Um, Wargaming in quite some time outside of modern. You know, you're talking 1879 for uh, Rourke's Drift. But he created a really good game. Um, he based it off the rule set. They would be Kings, I think it's called. It's a Osprey Press um, set, but he put his own uh, flavor on it, and he did a really good job. So, all right, let's work on painting up this guy a little bit. I'm just gonna. Uh, I hope you all had a chance to listen to the last podcast. Um, we talked a lot about bolt action and where it was going with the uh, Korean expansion, and then uh, Jim surprised me by saying he thought bolt to action would actually fit Vietnam better than uh, World War II. Um, you know, because bolt, bolt action to us is like a, um, it's a great game. I, it's one of the first games I started playing when I got back into war gaming. Um, and kind of agree it's kind of a... Um, World War II themed war game, not so much a World War II game per se, you know, simulation wise. Um, you know, because you look at ranges and stuff at 28 mil. You know, when you what frustrated me the most was uh, rifle ranges. You know, like an M1 or a Lee Enfield 303, and you couldn't shoot across Pegasus Bridge. You know, it would be out of range, and that's just silly. But, you know, it's for gameplay. you got to make things balanced and flow. And the people that play those games, some of them are not big historical buffs. And, you know, they're, they really don't care. You know, they want to have fun. And that's the whole key to gaming in the first place, right? It's just frustrating. From And I'm not a rivet counter by any means. Um, but it's frustrating when you know some reality... And how far a 308 or a 30 cal or a 303 will travel accurately. So that's where it gets a little frustrating. Oh, come on. All right. Let me check in some comments here. Uh, steel ball bearings. Yep. Yep. Would be four, but Columbus, Ohio is in my backyard. Yep. Uh, bolt action is the main game I play. The local scene is so heavy with terrain that the weapon range has really become an issue for us. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. You know, if you're using a lot of terrain in your games, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to um, the Korean expansion. Those, I know it seems silly, but the, the MASH quote-unquote figures um, really caught my attention, and I can't wait to get that set. Uh, because I'm going to use them in a role-playing game. Uh, we're going to offer up to members that follow the channel. Um, I backed a role-playing game. Uh, it's been about two years now. Called Mashed. Um, and it's basically Mash. In an RPG type game. Uh, it was a, just an independent publisher. Who did a little quick Kickstarter. And I backed it. And got the rule set and everything. And you know you can play the characters, you know, from MASH in different scenarios. So we just thought it's a light popcorn game, and we just thought it would be, you know, a quick, fun evening or two of doing that and uh, just having a little bit of fun. So, all right, let's take a look at him here. All right, so skin tone. 
again, you have the challenge of the darker skin tones. You, you don't want to make it flat and one-dimensional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wash on it first to do a little shading. And to do that, uh oh, I'm getting low. I have some, if I can get the camera, right is left, left is right, game color wash, uh, umber shade. Okay, so that's never good when it crackles. Uh oh, this is no bueno. It may be dried up. That's no good. No good at all. Well, I'm going to go with my wash is dead. All right, no problem. I got others. I can go away. I have others. Do, 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 do. Go with Agrax. I will do a little Agrax. Okay. Gonna give him a wash. And my thing with darker skin tones is I want to be respectful of the tone and you know you don't want to make it look cartoonish or you know just some people just paint black you know and granted there are some people with a very dark blackish skin tone but there you know there's variety in all skin tones just like you know no matter if it's like a, a pale Skin tone, you know, so you want to be respectful of it as well. I'm not a big person in being PC, politically correct, but I believe in being respectful and trying to be accurate as much as possible to my skill level. So... We'll let that dry up. And we'll go from there. All right. Okay. Let's take a quick check in. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that was Jim's point about Vietnam that it would be. Yep. You're 100% right, Rasmus. I really need to catch up on the podcast. Haven't had a chance to watch it yet. That. You can, uh, the podcast isn't video, it's uh, audio, so you can just, um, I think you can download it off of uh, Podbean. Uh, you can get on Google Podcast. it's on iTunes, it's on YouTube. Um, I don't think it goes to Facebook, just at the weekly podcast. And then tomorrow um, is the Op Center, uh, Jim's next episode. And uh, for our Patreon backers, it'll go out tonight, so they'll get that. Uh, thing with drop zone is I found out a good community here. I, that's excellent. I am so glad to hear that there's a great community. So, um, it's a great game. I think it, 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 they've put a lot of heart and soul into that game, and um, it deserves to be played. It really does. So, I'm glad to hear that people are keeping it alive. And there was a nice turnout at Adepticon, and it's always good to see our good friend Erasmus. Um, we first met at uh, Salute, wasn't it? Um, I think Salute was our first time when we had the uh, Backstager meet up at the pub there across the way from the convention center, the Excel Center. And then uh, I think we saw you boot camps too. So always a good time. All right, so let's see if he's dried up here. All right, for the most part. Let's get this. That looks so weird with the the razor sitting there like that. You know what? 
still got a little bit of... Let's look at the razor. All right, let me back out a little bit. Just back out a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is the razor I built on camera a couple, uh, about a month or so ago. Um, an excellent model. A lot of little pieces to build. Um, and as you can tell, I kind of jacked up the trans. Oh, dude. Uh, my grandson was looking at my stuff and uh, dropped this. And, oh, crap. And that's what happened. It broke. Okay. No worries. Quick repair. Oh, boy. That is probably my most frustrating thing when it comes to minis, if you will. Some of them just <sighs> can be a little on the front. Don't glue your finger to the mini. Never glue your... It's the other thing. Metal miniatures and me just aren't friends. They're an excellent miniature. I don't want to sway anybody from getting one. Um, if you can still get them. I don't know if you can even get the razors, can you? If they're available right now or not. Um, well, I guess I'm going to have to let that sit aside a second. Well, I let that seal up. Don't worry, we have plenty to go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Salute or Boot Camp, yep. Uh, any stores, stock, drop zone, or drop, drop fleet there? Uh, yeah, a couple. Hope to have the U.S. rep just in the next state. Sure does. All right. Um, while he's doing that, should we do work on American or Russian for Ultra Combat Modern? This is Dish Dash's new game, um, new rule set, and um, so it's you know ultra modern, if you will. You know the the near future. Um, so they've got some really nice gear. I mean, new helmets. It's it's stuff that's very current, equipment wise. So what do you guys think, American? Or Russian Federation. You decide. Russian. All right. Then Russian we shall go. Okay. I have no idea what color their uniforms are, but if I had to take a guesstimate. All right, so let's look at the mini first, all right? So if you guys are on the fence about getting these or are getting them if you back to Kickstarter. So this is one of the Russians, Federation. Uh, he's carrying an AK-74-ish type rifle, I believe. Um, the magazine is a little bent. I don't want to bend it too much because it will break. Uh, he's got their version of the new helmets. Um, he's got shoulder armor on him, full pack, wearing goggles. So, you know, very typical modern Russian. So let's talk about mold lines. Looking for mold lines. And honestly, it's very clean. Oh, there they are. Um... But they're in a great place. Let's see if I can... They're right here. They're on the inside of the leg. So, I mean... And there's a little flashing. Right there. Not too noticeable where they are at. You know, they're not on... They're in a really inconspicuous spot. 
Um, but that is the Russian. Looks really good. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, I like the Russian stance. Yep, more dynamic. Oh. And my friend Lance from Beast of War OTT got married tonight uh, over there in Coleraine. We want to wish him and his new bride the best. He just messaged. Lance, it's your, bir uh, it's your birthday. It's your wedding night. You shouldn't be messaging me. You have other things you need to do. Get on it. <sighs> no pun intended. All right, let's paint it up. So let me put these away. And I am taking a total, total crapshoot here on color. NATO green. There is a Russian up here. Maverick green. Maverick. Soviet green. We're going to use some good old-fashioned Team Yankee Soviet green for the base. All right, so for this, I'm going to grab a larger brush. Uh, we'll do a number three. So these are our games and gear sets, and I'm using a synthetic brush here. I like these brushes. Um, I've used many. I've used some Citadel brushes. I didn't like them. They didn't seem to hold point very well. Maybe I just got a bad brush. I have Army Painter brushes. Um, these are nice. I, I really do like the uh, tri uh, angled brush, so it help you know holds in your fingers better. I, Cause you know this is how I paint, so I I like that. Um, so I do like those army painter brushes. All right. Lick my brush. Yes, I'm a brush licker. All right, anybody else a brush licker? All right, get a bit of water. A little bit more water. I'm going to switch out. Switch him in. I like this paint handle. Um, it is nice, the Citadel paint handle. All right, I don't need my magnifier for this. I can just do it with glasses. Base coat, so put glasses back on. I really don't even need glasses. It's just for reading and smaller stuff, but, you know, what are you going to do? All right. Mr. Soviet. So technically not a Soviet. Um, you're Russian. They're not Soviets. Oops, sorry. See, this is why I need a producer to yell at me when the, I'm out of shot. So people aren't going, what am I looking at? And as our friend Duncan says, thin coats. Thin coats. Two thin coats. Dawn's a Duncan stalker. I don't know if I ever told you all that. She stalks him whenever we're at a convention. I know she knows he's there. But she failed this Adepticon. She never caught up with him. Which I think is funny. Because I don't think she's ever truly watched any of his stuff. But she likes him. Thinks he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Oh. <sighs> Lance, to quote Doctor Strange from the Avengers, you're in the endgame now. <laughs> uh, don't say Cad Pat. Dang it. Not Cad Pat. All right. Well, we'll do our version of Cad Pat. Ish. Russian Pat. What do we call it? Rusky Pat? Rud Pat? Russian Pat? I get him everywhere. So, are you one of those that likes to um, paint fast or spend a lot of time?
getting every little nook cranny detail. Are you, you know, one of these days, Andy has promised, Andy Zach, um, if you guys follow any of the miniature painting, uh, he does a lot of stuff. You know, he does a lot of moderns. He'll do World War II. He does, he did, just did some um, Song of Ice and Fire. The dude turns out um, mini painting. He does like, it takes him an hour to do one, I think is what somebody told me once. And he's promised me he's going to come on and do a tutorial video for us, uh, you know, live stream or a video um, to show people how he does it. So, yeah. So we're, hopefully we can get him nailed down soon on that. All right, so. Um, I need another green. I need another green. I need another tan. Uh, tan earth? Yeah, we'll use a little tan earth. So, tan earth? Flames of War? It's Vallejo. Let's see. Oops. If I can get a camera, Vallejo. Okay, a little bit, put that away, wet my brush, I do not need a number three, Excellent. I wonder if you can get paint poisoning from licking your brushes. Oh, that's right. He did do Pokemon on Justin's Drop Fleet. I forgot about that. You're right, Rasmus. He did on his Pokemon Fleet, the Yellow Nightmare. All right. Uh, I'll use a zero. Uh, this is from the Adepticon Master set. And get that in shot there for you. And just dab a little bit on. Just on the tip. Make sure it's more horizontal. And just dab, 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 dab. Not too much. Dab, 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 dab. This is why I can't do a whole sitting of guys at one time um, because it gets a little monotonous and you're all you're dabbing in one color. But you know what? It's like that, like when I try to do Napoleonics. Um, oh, you know, or Civil War, which I still have a big old Civil War project I need to work on. I need an assistant. I need to fly John over, but John won't get on an airplane. I don't understand these Irishmen's fear of flying, for goodness sake. I wish somebody would explain it to me. So, dab, 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 and remember, the more of the lighter color you go, the lighter the uniform will be in the end. Oops, sorry guys. I don't know how well that camera picks it up. For some reason, the lighting on this camera tonight is just 
not cooperating. Um, I'll see if I can get it. Can you see that in the little cam? No, not too much, huh? All right, sorry. I tried. Okay. I tried. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab. Dab, dab. Because I can tell you, when we first started doing conventions for Beast of War, now known as On Tabletop, uh, when we showed up to Adepticon and Gen Con especially, people were like, where's Warren? Where's Warren? Where's Warren? We're like, eh, we need to Warren. We want Warren. Eh. You know, makes us feel great, right? They don't care about us. They just want Warren. No, it's fine. He's very well known. Everybody likes him. It's a cool thing. We're really close. Love his kids to death. Um, but, you know, it's hard to explain. Well, the guy won't get on an airplane. So, we've offered to drug him. We have drugs. I don't see. Is Justin the only one that isn't afraid of flying? Um, ben will fly because Ben's been over. Um, you know, Ben from The Weekender. Um, sorry, I kicked the camera. Um, he came over two years ago to cover a Gen Con with us with Justin. And then last year it was Sam and Justin. Um, and I think Jerry's coming over to do Historicon with Justin if we go to that. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. All right, so we need a lighter green now. And I made the mistake of going... It's still too dark for my... Well, all right, so here's the quandary. Do I go with uniform green? Let's see if I can get that in there for you guys. Or do I go with goblin green? Because I know there's a brighter green in the uniform. So which one do you think is going to stand out more? That's true. Ben is English. That is That's a... Excellent point. He is English. He is English. It is very true that, I mean, here's the thing. You know, rail travel over in Europe is amazing. Uh, when we were in Switzerland for Christmas, um, we went to visit my son who's stationed in Germany. Um, so we took the train from Zurich to Stuttgart. Amazing experience. I'm telling you, Europeans know how to do tra uh, travel. They do it with such class. Um, the train station in Zurich was like a mall. It was like multi-level tracked, multi-levels for stores and things just quality in class it, it makes us americans look like slobs it's kind of sad amtrak never again yeah well i i to be fair to amtrak we have taken amtrak from chicago to st louis which is really only about a four or five hour trip but we did get a sleeper cabin because we were going to a cubs game down in st louis so if you know anything about cubs games and st louis games baseball there's a lot of drinking involved. So that sleeper cabin was a lifesaver. Oops. So. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. Rasmus, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to go to a baseball game yet, but uh, highly recommend it. You, you know, you live in the States now. you got to experience that part of our culture. And you live in Ohio, so you have several options for baseball. you got Cleveland Indians. you got the um, ooh, who else plays? Uh, Cincinnati Reds. So... You have lots of options when it comes to baseball. And then you got the Mud Hens, Toledo, I think, right? 
They're a minor league team, but still good. Dab, dab, dab. I don't know if, how well that's standing out for you, but it's coming along all right. That green really helps break it up. Love going to watch KC to watch the Royals. The Royals! Oh my goodness. Well, they're a good team, I think. Are they good this year, the last couple of years? Okay. All right, a little bit more of this bright green. So you're saying that there isn't the real dark green in the Russian uniform, if I remember correctly. That's cool. I'm just going to... Take a little bit more dabs of this, and I am going to throw some black in it um, just to help tone it. Separations. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And then I got to do this. Uh, let me see if I can get them to stand out or if that's going to... I was trying to use the paper as a reflector for you, but I can't get it to reflect enough. Can you see the colors now? So, yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, definitely needs just a tad of black. I guess, you know, if I was smart and have thought about this before, There's no black? All right. Only light greens and brown. Okay. Uh, well, brown tan. Okay. Is there a, a darker shade of brown outside of this lighter tan that I can use for separation to break it up a little bit, the pattern, or is that pretty much it? I'm relying on you, Skobak, because I don't know. That's it. Three colors. Okay. There's three colors. Okay. Um, we'll do a tan up his boots. And for that, we're going to use my good friend, Iraqi Sand. She's fixed. So I'm hoping you guys get a chance to post your stuff on the Facebook page and stuff. Because um, we'd love to see what you guys are working on. Ooh, boy, that came out thin. And uh, now don't freak on the brightness of this. Wow, that's really thick. Um, Duncan's going to throw me back in pr and paint prison. Helps if you're in shot, silly. Okay. Because um, I'm going to put a wash on it. Let me thin that down. There we go. Thin coats. Thin coats. And I end up cutting it off anyways. Well, you know what? I don't have to decide what I'm going to do with these guys since... Um, You moving again, Rasmus? Goodness. Oh, that's right. You bought a house, didn't you? Congrats. Will we see you at Gen Con this year? Or is moving going to get in the way of that? Okay. Um... Ward 
hog green, it's going to be my knee pads. Okay. Okay, magnifier time. Make sure he's, yeah, I'm in, good, good, good. All right, and then the armor. So weird armor, but it is actual armor. It, it my thing is, you know, this is supposed to be ultra modern. Um, you know, and these guys are wearing quote unquote armor. If you're not familiar with combat gear and all the gear you have to take with you, the shit's heavy. You know, unless they're making this stuff out of carbon fiber, it's heavy. The old um, vests we used to have back in the 80s, you know, like the old flak jackets, those things were heavy. Plus, you put on your rucksack, which is, you know, the Alice, the old Alice pack, and when it's fully loaded, it was like 60 pounds. And then you had a 40 pound chute because I was airborne. And then you had um, you know your weapon. You had ammunition. You had all that stuff. So it wasn't uncommon to add on an extra 100, 120 pounds of weight to you. Now, granted, when you went into combat, you wouldn't be carrying all that, but it's still a lot of weight. And I can tell you, when you're in full combat load and doing a jump, you and you're doing it from 800 feet, because that's normal altitude for combat jumps, you hit the ground almost instantaneous from jumping out of the plane. It's crazy. So, and I wonder why people get back problems. Need the future Wario exosuit. Yeah. You know, I was watching something about the exosuits that they're, you know, in development and working on. Um, it sounds amazing and great as long as it works. Because um, I can tell you when the things don't work, which does happen in the military, believe it or not, more than you think. You still got to carry the stupid thing. You can't just drop it. So now you got to carry all that weight. So. It's, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, development on that is and, you know, what the backup is and all that stuff, you know, in those kind of scenarios. And is it truly that agile? Um you know, it's just one of those things. Modern technology at its finest, trying to make the modern warrior. You know, it was the Warrior 2000 plan at one point. Oh, here, let me see. So,
Okay, so I'm going to let that sit a second. Um, I'm going to apply my second thin coat to his boots. And it's a problem when your paints start getting old, they get thick and gooey. Time to up. But our favorite hobby shop, uh, game store that we used to get all our stuff from, closed this past year, which was very sad. We had been with them. Um, you know, since they opened years ago, we helped them do a, a little store video for them. And, you know, they, when we did coverage of um, a mini game convention here called Holy Wars, uh, which was an Aegis, Age of Sigmar tournament, they donated a starter set as a prize giveaway. Um, so they were a really bustling store. I think the owner just got burned out, unfortunately and just decided it wasn't worth it anymore and that's sad because it was a great store and you know it was close and all that good stuff uh my father-in-law was jumping out of planes in your old stomping grounds in the 60s awesome just saw flying pig is doing a hex encounter game for the falcons really where is jim when you need him he should know this so All right. See, so I got to use my phone to do the comments because I can't run the studio stuff and have Twitch up on there or we get the double feedback. We figured out that problem. So, all right, he's looking pretty good. So far, so good. We're going to put a wash on him here soon. Um, and then we'll move on from there. So, again, it's a really nice mini. Uh, if you guys get a chance to get some of these, um, I would highly suggest it. Oh, you're playing Dark Star with them on Saturday. Excellent. I, you know, I have to try that. Um, I don't know if you guys caught the live stream we did a few weeks ago where I did the Falklands Air War with him. British, me, one. <laughs> Didn't lose one single airplane. Harriers against, uh, what they're MiGs, right, I believe? Were they MiGs? Mirages. Mirages. Um, and yeah, so Jim does a lot of good stuff. Thank you, Mir yep, Mirages. So, um, you know, he does a lot of really good stuff. Okay, wash. What do I want to wash with? Do I want to go with none oil? Do I want to go with a green wash? Hmm. Well, I know I'm going to use a brown wash on the boots to dirty them down and take the brightness off of them. I don't know if I want to go with the nun oil because that would really darken them. Sleeping till noon. I can't remember the last time I slept till noon. You know, even on days off, I'm up at 6. So, all right. Well, let's go... Let me close this so I don't put my hand in the paint. And the first thing I'm going to do is... Nope, that's too red. Uh, I'm going to use a little of my sepia tone here to get in the frame to do his boots. And I know you're not supposed to take out of a pot, but... Citadel pots and washes. I'm not going to pour it out. It just waste it. I, that's the one thing I do not like about Citadel paints. They're pots. I have knocked over more pots than I like to, to admit to. And wasted so much nun oil and other washes. There we go. We'll let that dry. 
I agree. Keep off the nun oil. So we're going to go with a... Uh, oh, where did I put my other washes? So I'm going to use a uh, game color wash, green shade. And this one I have to obviously use a palette for. Ooh, that's really... thick. I don't know if I want to go that... Um, let's see. Now it's too bright. Definitely not using that one. No worries. I have more. I gotta jump up here. Because I can't reach the other end. Military shader. There we are. Army Painter's Military Shader. And I'm going to get that in there for you. Military Shader. Put that away. Just a little bit of that. That's better. And I'll wash in we go. Put it in frame. This one I'm trying to do sparingly and just make sure it gets into the recesses and doesn't obliterate the camo, but gets into all those nooks and crannies I need it to go. So, what's your favorite paints? Do you have a favorite, or you just use whatever you can get your hands on and make do with? There are some paints I really, really want to get that I have yet to get, and I have no excuse because they're always at Adepticon, and that's the MIG paints. So... Just going to do a quick dab to get any puddling done so it doesn't obliterate it. I want to keep detail but get the shading right. Alright, so there we go. We'll let that dry. probably gonna have to go with a darker shade on his boots uh, to pick out laces and stuff here which is fine I can do that all right let me catch up on some comments here all right so um, and I know oil and carpets don't mix too well, very true and uh, Nova says I'd like to keep a cheap hair dryer on my paint table to quick dry colors to try and keep moving along I used to do that um, but I always, for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm just doing it too close. It kind of pushed the paint, if you know what I mean. Uh, Scoback uses, um, I usually mainly use Army Painters since I have them all. I recently started on Mission Model Paints when I can. Mission Model Airbrush Primer is the best I've ever used. Really, I'll have to give it a try. Just after moving here, I did go for a fair bit of P3 paints. Um... What do you think of P3 paints? I ha have a few. Uh, mostly we got them for War Machine. Um, I like the color schemes. Uh, there is the man himself. Jim has joined us. Uh, Jim 
Rasmus was telling me that there's a new, was it a Kickstarter? Or, uh, uh, doesn't say, but Flying Pig has done a Hex Encounter game for the Falklands. So, thanks for joining us. Welcome. So we're going to let that dry up. Oh, don't apologize. It's all good. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, luckily if you got a that nice of a game store. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm kind of moving away from game stores for hobby supplies and going back to my good old hobby shops. You know, um, you know, just a good old hobby shop. Because you can get all kinds of paints, and I really like doing terrain and stuff. And I'm going to try and do some terrain projects here soon with you guys on a uh, stream night. And um, if I can get... I'm having a seizure. Just excuse me. Um, so, all right. We're going to put him aside for a minute. Let him dry up. I'll put our Mena guy back here. So now I want to lighten up these skin tone areas here. So to do that, um, I want to go with a really light, not light like, so it's obvious, but I think I'm going to start with a little bit of beige brown. Oops. Scale model site, excellent. You know, I haven't built a good scale model in a long time. Um, I think the last thing I built was, uh, you remember the big old, I don't remember what scale it is, Ravel um, F14 Tomcat, um, the larger one. Is it 135th? I don't remember. You know, it was a larger scale one. Telling you, Jim, we're going to have to have a game weekend of Hex Encounter games. You know, when we do our uh, boot camp here in the U.S., we'll have to dedicate time for some Hex Encounter games on one of the days. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of brown. And I'm going to throw in just a little dab of the darker brown here. Oh, that's brown glaze. I don't want to use that. Oops. It separated on me. Mix that up. If you guys have not had the opportunity to reach out to Jim, um, oh, I got to plug in my phone because it's about to die. Um, for one of his games, you know, if he's got openings, I highly suggest it. If you've watched any of them, they are a lot of fun, and he puts a lot of work into them. And it really is like you're playing the game itself, you know. Um, so he uh, does an amazing job and really enhances the game experience. Um, and he's a very kind host, and um, his games are a lot of fun. I'm trying to find a cord for my phone because, of course, it doesn't use the standard cord. Uh, give me one second here. I gotta go grab a cord. Um, we're gonna take a quick intermission, and we will be right back.
All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Equipment issues. Again, this is why you need a producer. Somebody to run all the other stuff. And it's based on the old school tactics. Oh, awesome. All right. So, of course, this cord's short, but it will get by. We shall get by. Oh, you know, what I was talking about in one of the streams for Hobby is that I like small scale. And I was trying to find, we were talking about converting Team Yankee to a smaller scale. And this is one of those scales I was talking about. That is 3 mil. That is a section for M1s. Um, on a custom 3D printed base I made. So I designed these little bases for uh, 3 mil M1s. Not too bad. These are uh, from Pico Armor M1s. Um, I got several other little miniatures and I thought about trying Team Yankee at 3 mil. I thought about moving up to um, GHQ, which is 6 mil, uh, 1 285th scale, uh, just because of a little more detail. But, you know, I look at these. These are really nicely detailed for such a small scale. Because so I can make out the racks. I can make out equipment. I don't know. It's hard to make under the camera. But these are really nice. So there you go. 3 mil M1s, Abrams, for Team Yankee. So, all right, let us proceed. Okay, so we were going to work on highlighting this young man here. So first, I want to take a little bit of the dark brown and a little bit of the lighter brown and mix it to give me another shade. Clean my brush. And then make sure it's dry. I'm going to pull some of this. And think about where it's going to shade. And gently paint those areas. Blend it as best I can so it's not harsh lines, right? And again, trying to be respectful of people's skin tones and not make anything look cartoonish or, you know, anything like that. Just thinking about how, you know, it would be highlighted. I'm going to go deep here. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to go a little lighter on the uh, definite highlights. And we're going to do more of the lighter brown with just a dab of the darker brown just to get it to the shade comfortable with. Clean my brush real well. And just Take the tip, run it, and then I want to draw this out. Just 
Just like that. It's got to be subtle, because like I said, you don't want to make it cartoonish, right? You want it to be subtle. Try and blend it in best you can, just like that. Okay, it adds some dimension, and I'm going to get his neck here to give some depth and it, get his cheekbone. And then the outside of his ear, because these are all high points, right? And you want to create separation and then his nose just like that all right i need to clean this up here so we're gonna go a little darker and create a shadow there we go just like that come over here into the seam just to create that shadow, just like that. And then right here, we're creating that separation, just like that. Okay. And then lastly here, okay, looking pretty good. All right, let me check comments. All right. Uh, well, yep, GHQ 6 mil. Really like those M1s. Thank you. Uh, 6 by 4 table at 3 mil. Ooh, boy. Uh, Nova said, I don't think I can go to smaller than 15. Oh, yes, you can go smaller. Trust me, once you go smaller, it's awesome. Uh, Rasmus says, Jim, then ranges start to make sense. This is very true. 6 times 600 is 3,600 feet or over a half a mile long. Very true. Definitely a lot closer. I'll be honest, once you get to 3 mil, I would go, almost go Hex and Connor, but I'm biased. No! Uh, by the way, is that hot glue, or what is that on the base? Yes, it is hot glue. Um, because these are temporary bases, I'm using this just to paint. When I'm done, I'm going to pop him off, and he's going to go on a clear base. So, he'll go on one of these. Uh, it's paper backing. i got to take the paper off. And he'll go on a clear base, just like the Canadian I painted up in our previous episode. I'll grab him real quick, show you how he looked with the clear base. Love these wireless headsets, because I can travel freely. And I'll move him out of the way. And here he is. That is the Canadian I print, painted up in CAD Pat. Uh, he's even got the little Canadian flag right there. Uh, he came out really nice. This is from Full Battle Rattle. Uh, this is their Canadians from Full Battle Rattle. So if you have not had an opportunity, I highly suggest it. Oh, sorry, I moved him out of camera range there. I was trying to get a better, because they're so dark today. But th he's really nice. Let me see if I can uh, adjust this studio light here to give us a uh, better color on him so you can see him better that looks a little better huh so yeah canadian cad pat clear base so when i'm playing let's see if i can get him where you can see him you can see him on the close the white cam blends right into the table real well um so as a matter of fact I'll give you a quick demo of this. Let's see what I can use. I can use this old piece I made for a 
bolt action uh, demo game um, years and years and years ago. So I'm going to get him sighted up there. And as you can see, let me get him where you can see him. Well, let me move this guy's out of the way. Blends in really nice. So, and then here is a Spectre Mini uh, SAS. And I have had another casualty in the War of the Dog. Spectre Mini down. Got eaten. My freaking dog likes my miniatures. Comes into the hobby room and for whatever reason likes to eat the miniatures. No bueno. All right, let's check messages here. Uh, let's see. I like to clear bases. Thank you. I bought clear bases for all my Star Wars Legion. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Uh, clear bases are great. Tempted to rebase a few armies. And I just like them because that way, you know, you don't... It's. I, I think it's just me, but I just hate getting distracted by the base. You know, it comes down to, oh, come on. Um, you know, if I'm playing in the desert, I don't want one of the jungle guys with their big tall grass and everything. It just looks out of place. Uh, you know, I'm all about the immersive experience. So, um, yeah. All right. Let us paint this gentleman's hair. And what do I have here? Black. Because we're definitely going to use this for his hair. Just a skosh. Ooh, that's no bueno. And that's definitely no bueno. Okay. Well, I'll have to fix that later. It just goes to show you I need some new paints. I don't need new paints. I got a million paints, but. I hate wasting paint. I truly hate wasting paint. All right. And I just painted. No, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Let me make sure I'm in frame. Okay. And just going to paint his hair. I think he has hair. If he doesn't, yeah, it looks like it's sculpted in there. It's a little too damp still. If he doesn't have hair, he has it now. Okay. And we're just going to do a little bit. Reality. Underarm hair, right? How many people do you don't paint underarm hair on their miniatures? Okay, and he does have glasses as well. But I think I'm going to paint those in silver. I think I'm going to paint his shoes black as well. Just because I have all this black and I hate to waste it. But I got it watered down. So the tan underneath will help. And the base primer is this right here, Style Lives Primer. Uh, we get bottles of this at Adepticon in the swag bags, so we have several. And I like it because it's such a neutral color that colors come out personally, I think, truer. Um, you know, they don't come out too dark. They don't come out too light. You know, you, like you'll get with um, whites or blacks or grays. Um, so. Almost like a wash on that one. Let's get some of this moisture up. And we'll put some more on my brush here. There we go. 
pull it off here. So, but like I said, stay tuned tomorrow for Jim's next episode of the Op Center, and he's talking about the Falklands, uh, which was very highly requested, may I say, by um, everybody, um, especially our UK audience. Uh, they thought it was awesome. And I tell you what, the, Jim puts a lot of time, effort, and energy into these episodes and really sets the bar for quality production. So um, I truly appreciate all his work, and um, I hope you all enjoy it. And if you guys you know, feel like supporting us in any way shape and form we do have a patreon and believe me it does not matter to us one way or the other if you do or do not uh, please don't think you know we care one way or the other it helps to um, upgrade some equipment um, and pays for just the um, cost of the servers for hosting so all right so i got his shoes done ish um, i'm gonna do a wash on his pants and a wash on his shirt. So we're going to do a little bit of blue wash on his pants. Just a dab. As they say, a dab will do ya. Again, I want a faded look as well. You know, I don't want them to look like new jeans. So I just got to be careful. I don't overdo the, and I can always pull a little bit off. Like here, I want to thin out the knee here. Oops, sorry guys. Um, see, I want to put a little bit of water on the knee. And then take my thumb and wear it down. Buff it out a little bit. And it creates that worn look. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So put a little bit of water. Work it in a little bit. Take your thumb. And just rub it down. And it wears it thin. Okay. Just like that. That looks good. Alright, so that was all I needed of that. And then we're going to take some red game color wash. I'm just a dab. And you know what? I do use my game airs as washes because um, they're already really thin, but you add a little bit more water to them. Perfect. And you can you know have multicolor washes if you will. Okay. And the nice thing is, I know like Rasmus says he uses P3. P3 has a color combination set where you use, you know, this red and then you go to a, a orangey yellow for highlighting and, you know, a step up from there. And it works really well. So I may use some on some highlighting here when this is done and dry. But uh, there he is so far. He'll make a good bad D. A good baddie. All right, let me catch up on some comments. See how we're doing. All right, clear bases. Oh no, attack of the cut. Yeah. Uh, looks really weird in street battles. Wherever you go, you see a magical circle of brush. <laughs> um, maybe a new mini fridge for a new hobby room for beer and paints. Next. Awesome. IR operations. Um, thanks for the kind word. Jim, I just bought a Vulcan and a Victor model and a 1 100 scale in case you get there to do some 15 millimeter tables on Falklands. Just in case. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. You know what? Because I have this blue sitting here, we're going to paint his hat in this blue. 
Oops, cuts. Still got a paint. Oh, gosh darn it, guys. Um, this is AK. So, can anybody tell me why the AK is the most pop, most, it's not the most popular, I guess that's not exactly, the most prolific modern weapon in use in the world? Jim would probably know the answer to this. But it is probably the most prolific weapon in use, the AK, in some variant, 47s, 74s, probably a lot more 47s than 74s, but. And to quote a certain movie, the AK-47 makes a distinctive sound. Know it. Learn it. Okay. So, there is his hat painted up. Bonus points to whoever knows that movie. All right, we'll let him sit and dry a second. Um, We'll come back and look at our Russian guy here. Recon. Very good, Rasmus. Preferred weapons of your enemy. Very true. Vulcans make a big appearance in tomorrow's episode. Awesome. Because they were cheap to make. They were very cheap to make. I'm not saying they're a cheap weapon, but they are very cheap to make. They're stamped. They're a stamped weapon. You know, machine uh, factory could stamp out hundreds, thousands of them easily. All right, let's uh, do a quick review. This is the uh, Russian. I think the uniform turned out nice it's up to this point. All right, so we're definitely going to... Uh, Darken that up a little bit. And for that, I need a darker. What? No, I want dark. <sighs> I am going to use some nun oil on this one. I need to get those boots, laces. stand out. There we go. A little bit better. Let me get it in so you can see it again. That's why you have somebody helping you watch it. All right, so putting that oil in there, get into those boot laces. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Okay, guys, it's uh, about 8.30. I think we're going to call it at that. Um, we're going to do some final chats for tonight. Uh, let's see what we got going on. I really like the conversations we got going on. Uh, cheap Russians gave them away next to nothing. Recon, the preferred weapon, and it makes a distinctive sound when fired at you, so remember. Yep. Easy on train as well. Good for some of my train insert. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a point and shoot weapon at this point, right? I recall out a classroom that had elites. Heartbreak Ridge poster on. Excellent. Heartbreak Ridge. An excellent 80s movie. I remember seeing that one in the theater. I almost joined the Marines based on that movie. Almost. But not close. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. He's looking pretty nice. Um, I don't know if you guys are making out the details on him, but again, they're really sharp. Um, I'm going to do some highlighting on here to bring out these edges. And I want to do it a little bit. Definitely going to do some uniform green on that. We can do that before we wrap up. Just a little bit. Get it into what, the tip. And do a 
just going to highlight Yeah, see that? Okay. Just highlight. Just highlight. There, it's all right. So sorry if I not uh, keep it. Sometimes you just gotta concentrate. You can't talk when you're concentrating. It's harder than it thinks, you know. When you're broadcasting and sometimes we make it look easy, and it takes a lot of concentration. Hey, if you guys didn't catch, if you go to um, on tabletop last week, or was it this week? Uh, Dawn and I did a review of, I know this is totally off modern topic, but I just think it's funny. Um, we did a review of the Fantasy Flight 2nd Edition X-Wing uh, for the First Order expansion, uh, the update cards for X-Wing, you know, 2nd Edition. And I just rip on Kylo Ren. I hate Kylo Ren with a passion. I think he's a spoiled little brat, and he acts like it in the movies, which just makes it so stupid and hilarious at the same time. So I definitely uh, do not hold back in that video. It's only about maybe 10 minutes. So if you have nothing better to do with your time and want a amusing little video, you can definitely check that out. That's looking better. That really brings out the details. I'm liking it. Liking it a lot. Let's see if I can see how it's coming out. Excellente. All right, I'm gonna close my wet palette here. Catch up on some conversation. Gonna have to get a tablet for this. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Couldn't have that much awesomeness in one branch. I did manage a dry brush run at some planes for you, guest drop zone commander. Uh, I really need to get back to this kind of hobby. I've been tinkering around with. Some Halo guy. Oh, wow. Uh, watch the ASFAI unboxing. Oh, thank you. Um, Vulcan, since I got it at Adepticon. Song of... Is it... Uh, that's a good game. Um, Song of Ice and Fire. It is a good game. Um, you know, for a mass battle-ish game. And... To play it and to have Michael here at the American studio, which is in our house, in our basement. We have a whole room dedicated as the studio. So what you see on um, TV or the Internet is actually in our house. That's our studio. Um, fortunately, we don't have the capabilities right now to have a separate building for a studio. But we have a nice room dedicated to that for video production. Um, so... But he came out, and that all those stuff that he did with Justin uh, was done here at our new studio, so at the house. Um, so talking to Michael, we played, believe it or not, we played Godfather with Michael, uh, the game by Eric Lang, CMON game, which is a lot of fun. And we had pizza and just chatted one night. And 
he's a very quiet guy, but he does open up after a while, and we had a really good time. So, But uh, Saga of Ice and Fire is a really good game, and I like that they're supporting it, and the minis are beautiful. Um, even if you don't play Song of Ice and Fire, if you want to use them for Saga, you know, Fantasy now, or even other games, um, they're really well done. I think Rasmus or anybody who's had them or exposed to them would agree with that. So this is the Russian, which I'll finish up at another point, uh, for Ultra Combat from Dish Dash Publishing. And this is the uh, MENA. Um, Middle East, North Africa, um, I believe set is what they call it, a mana set, uh, from Spectre Miniatures. And I do have the full battle rattle, which I showed you, and I still have some more of the full battle rattle. This is command team here, uh, part of the command team. Uh, this one is the interpreter, which I had to ask Alex for, you know, because I wasn't sure, because it, it just looked different. Obviously, it is. Uh, it almost looks space managed, to be honest with you, but um, it's an interpreter. Uh, that comes in the command team pack. Um, so I got a few of those to work on. Um, obviously, we will. I promise in the next one, my goal is to finish this baby up in the next episode of the uh, Percent Arms. We're going to get this one all tied down. We're going to get it done now that I've glued it in stride. Um, so um, I really, really like this model a lot. Um, I also have a JLTV from Spectre that I got at Adepticon we have to put together, but I'm going to work on this one first. And then we are definitely going to do, I think we're going to do a live stream of the uh, game um, on the demo table. Um, I will get one of the local guys here to come over and we will live stream on um, maybe a Tuesday night or even, I, you know, we might do it on a weekend. You guys tell me, when would be the best time to live stream a actual game? Um, not just, you know, because we want to get people from the Europe and the UK because obviously right now it's uh, 20 to 9 here in Chicago land. So that puts it almost 3 in the morning-ish in uh, the UK. So uh, we want to make sure we get everybody involved and, you know, have all that good stuff. So you guys let us know what it is you'd like. Weekends might be best. Cool. Uh or old D and D as I got back. Oh, which version of DD are you playing, Rasmus? Um, I'm a total second edition person myself. Love second edition. And actually, my uh, high school buddies that you know, we we get together and we play Dust um, every other week or so. I uh, want to get into role playing as well. We got them into Dust. If you guys have not played a game and you're looking for a really good um, war game, uh, hex. It's not hex based. It's grid based um the miniatures are amazing uh check out dust uh, i can't say enough for that actually we might do during halloween week uh a weird war theme week um here on the sit rep and dust might be one of those so uh, it's really a fun game if you've not played it i know there's some history but that's long past guys i can i can vouch for that uh, they are not paying me um, I am friends. I'll, full disclosure, I'm very good friends with the Dust USA people, uh, Greg and Alicia, um, and Paulo is a great guy. And yes, there has been some incidents in the past, but Greg and Alicia here in the U.S. have worked very, very, very hard to uh, fix all those. And they're amazing people, and they make, um, you know, they're making some really good products. So it's a great game. Uh, it's well thought out. I I find it a lot of fun. So. With that in mind, I think we're going to close out the show, guys. Um, I'm going to um, keep the comments open for uh, just another five minutes or so, but I appreciate everybody uh, joining us for the actual stream tonight. Um, and in the meantime, remember, tomorrow we have the Op Center. And uh, until next time, we will catch you later. But again, we're going to keep the comments open for a little bit. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.